with so many different new broadheads coming on the market every single year, it's hard to know which ones really work well, which ones maybe don't work so well, which ones should I give a shot. And I think the biggest thing with, with archery and with bow hunting is when you find a system that works, when you find a full arrow system that works, arrow weight that works for you, something that shoots really great, something that gets good penetration, something that leaves a good blood trail, so on and so forth. When you find one that works great, try your best not to change anything. The old adage of if it ain't broke, don't fix it can come into play. And what we tend to do as bow hunters is tinker and mess with things that aren't broken and end up making them worse than sticking with something that actually works really well. During my time bow hunting, I've used both mechanical and fixed blade broadheads. I've had good outcomes with both. I've had not so great outcomes with both. I don't really have a hard stance one way or the other of whether you should use only fixed blade or only mechanical. I think there's a time and place for both think if you have a system that works well for you. I know some guys that use mechanicals that just blow through everything and they leave great blood trails and they have great recovery rates with them. Can't say don't use them to those guys. I know guys that use fi fixed blades only their whole lives and they've had great outcomes with those. Great blood trails, great recovery rates. Can't hardly say don't use them for those guys either. So really just tinkering around and finding which ones work best for you. And if you find one that works great, stick with it. Don't change anything. <laughs> and hopefully they continue to sell the broadhead you like. So first let's look at the Magnus Stinger Buzzcut broadhead. Now these ones are 100 grain but they're made in an 85 grain and 125 grain tip as well. So you know use whichever one makes sense makes the most sense for your FOC or your your arrow weight that sort of thing and go with that. I think one of the pros with the with the Magnus Stinger Buzzcut is being a fixed blade, you're not going to have to worry about any sort of issues with blades uh, coming loose or blades uh, not deploying, that sort of thing. Obviously, with a fixed blade, you don't, you don't deal with those issues. I've only killed two deer with this, with this broadhead with the Magnus Stinger buzz cut, but I will tell you, one of them was absolute perfection. It was a doe, mature doe. She only went about 50 yards. I shot her in the evening and went and found her in the dark. And I didn't have a blood trail. We happened to walk up on her. She hadn't gone that far. Um, and she had probably expired, you know, not even 10 seconds after shooting her. So she was quartering away just a tad bit. And I think in the picture that I'll throw up for you guys here, it, you can see, I believe, the exit wound from, from her. And it doesn't look very big. This is not a big cutting surface broadhead. Um, I think that it maybe makes an inch inch cut. So it's not one of the you know, two and a half inch cuts like you're going to get with some expandable or mechanical broadheads. Um, but the thing that's nice that I do like about this broadhead is I think that everything I shot at with this broadhead, I would easily pass through with no issues. And for the two deer that I killed with it, mature doe, and then the biggest buck I've ever killed, never had any issue with penetration. And for me, that was a big deal because I've always shot kind of a lower draw weight. I've always shot about 50 pounds. I now shoot 60 pounds. And my draw length is only 27 and 27 and a half inches. So not a lot of uh, feet per second coming out of my, my shots, not a lot of kinetic energy. So I have to have something that, that can handle that. Magnus Stinger buzz cut is a great option for someone with maybe lower kinetic energy or someone that's just looking for a broadhead that they can get a lot of great penetration with 70 pounds, with 80 pounds, with 50, 60 pounds, 40 pounds, I think you're going to get a lot of penetration out of this broadhead no matter what system or what arrow or what bow you're shooting. The con to this broadhead for me is the serrations on the blades. Now, if you're only going to be a one and done shooter on these, Magnus does a great job at sending you broadheads that are sharp right out of the package. That said, I've done a video in the past about how I sharpen broadheads and the system that I use. It's from a, a company, a guy named Ron Innovative Outdoorsman. I believe he's up north in Wisconsin, Minnesota, somewhere like that. He has a system, uh, the Stay Sharp Guide, that's just really great, easy system to use. Uh, it takes all the guesswork out of angles and things like that. Um, the issue with, with sharpening these is the serrations. You need to sharpen those two. You can't just sharpen, you can sharpen just the Tonto tip and the, the straight edge that's there, but you also need to sharpen those serrations. I don't want to deal with all that. It's a lot of time taken into it and a lot of effort. He does have some videos on his YouTube channel, The Innovative Outdoorsman, that shows you how he sharpens these serrations. So it's possible to do. I don't think it's that difficult. 
he, he may have an actual jig now that you could use to just sharpen the serrations along with the edges. But great broadhead for penetration for almost anybody, I think. And, you know, it killed the two deer that I killed with it. Now, the buck that I shot was a liver shot. Um, I think just straight on liver shot, no lungs, anything like that. I had to leave him overnight and came back and, and he had gone a ways, but he had trailed back to the place that he, that he lived in his, in his uh, home area, which was where I shot him. And we're just fortunate to find him. We would find drops of blood here and there tracking up to him. And we were doing pretty good tracking. It was super cold. So we had to come back and warm up, came back and luckily found like walked up on him lean, you know, not 30, 40 yards from where we had started tracking. So, um, I can't be, I can't make a judgment call on that one, but I will say it passed through him. It just wasn't a great shot. So I can't criticize the broadhead for not having that deer drop and, and not leave a great blood trail because it was a liver hit and just not great. So I think that I would use these again, other than I don't want to sharpen the serrations and I'm not someone who gets them out of the package and uses them. They need to be sharp. So I don't want to put the time in to sharpen the serrations. Next one we'll look at here is just the, called the Magnus Stinger. So it's the same, essentially the same broadhead. I think you can see a difference though in size with the naked eye even. The Magnus Stinger looks like a much bigger broadhead than the Stinger Buzz Cut. They both have what's called bleeder blades on them, which are kind of nice for having just that little extra, extra cutting surface. I shot two deer with these Magnus Stinger broadheads. And this is whenever I was kind of in my ranch ferry phase where I was trying to get a really heavy arrow and a fixed blade broadhead, something that was very structurally intact. And this is one that you can afford, um, that anybody can afford. If you go with a single bevel broadhead, those can get kind of expensive for three of them. You could be looking at maybe a hundred dollars or more for a three pack of them. These Magnus ones, um, you can get for about 40 bucks, pretty standard price for three broadheads. One thing I didn't mention on the Magnus ones though, that is really nice. And I actually utilized this. The first deer that I shot with these Magnus stingers, I uh, passed completely through the doe was laying on top of the arrow whenever I found her, but it had pretty much completely passed through. I mean, there was an entry and an exit, no doubt. Something had happened to the very tip of this blade where it was kind of maybe folded over just a little bit. I don't want to diss the blade and say they're not, high quality steel or or metal because they are but it got damaged a little bit as long as you can find recover the blade show that it's damaged you can mail it back to magnus and they will replace that whole broadhead at no cost so you essentially buy three of these as long as you can find them you can resharpen them pretty easily especially the stingers because they don't have any serrations like the buzz cut does you can resharpen them pretty darn easily and if you have any that get damaged and you can prove that by having the broadhead with you and mailing it back to them, they will replace it for free and send you a new broadhead. So that's a really great deal as far as these can be a three pack for life. If you want them to, you can resharpen them. And if they get damaged, you send them back and get a replacement and you're good to go. So really great value there. The second deer that I shot with these was a buck. Um, and he was quartering away. And when I shot, he was alert and he ducked and I hit him high. Basically, I think I hit him in the back straps and did not recover that deer. I don't think, I don't think he died, but I really don't know for sure. But I really didn't find much blood. And anyway, I found my arrow. The broadhead was gone. My guess is that that broadhead got lodged into his back straps, you know, that thick muscle meat and where it broke off was right at the um, insert or the outsert on the arrow. And so, yeah. So I can't be fair to say that that broadhead didn't do the work. Hit them in the back straps. I don't know a whole lot of broadheads and kinetic energy, high kinetic energy that's going to blow through that. And it doesn't really matter because through the back straps, you're not going to kill the deer. So I can't be fair to say this broadhead didn't do the job. It really did on the doe that I killed. I hit her a little high too, and it blew right through and she went 80 yards beautiful blood trail on that deer. Um, I may have some video of that, that, that blood trail I can throw up here while I'm talking about this broadhead, but um, great blood trail on that deer. And I didn't even need it because she didn't get out of sight. The, the knock that I would have on this, on this broadhead, and really the only one that I would have, and this is just me, is there are one, the tonto tip, the long edge, the back edge here, 
and then the front and the back edge of both bleeder blades. That's one, two, three, four, five edges to sharpen per side. So total, you're talking about 10 edges to sharpen whenever you go to resharpen these. Now that said, they're easily resharpenable, at least using the Stay Sharp guide system that I use. So they're super easy to resharpen. They're easy to get sharp again. This broad has been sitting here for almost a year since I sharpened it, and it's still sharp as can be. So they're easily, easy, easily resharpened. They take a long time because I think that I would spend on two, doing two edges of each of these, each of these blades takes about 30 to 45 minutes. You've still got eight more to go after that. I got tired of having to spend that much time sharpening these. And again, if you like sharpening broadhead blades, these are the one for you because there's a lot of sharpening to do. That's not a knock on the broadhead itself because it does a great job. You probably don't have to sharpen the back edges of the blades, like the main blade. You don't really have to sharpen this, but it's there. It's made to be sharpened. You might as well sharpen it. You never know if, if it's going to stay inside the deer and it's sloshing back and forth. It still could be cutting stuff. So... That's the only knock on those though. They're really, it's a, this is a really great broadhead to use as far as like I was talking about the buzz, the buzz cut penetration is, is there. I think, especially if you're someone who, who shoots 65, 70 pounds, there is and a high, you know, long draw length, 28, 29, 30 inches. You, you're going to blow through everything with this broadhead and penetration should not be a problem as long as you're not hitting back straps and you're not hitting like a humerus bone or, something like that. If you're hitting in the kill zone, this thing is going to fly through ribs and, and soft tissue, no problem. So great broadhead there, very structurally intact. Um, one little note that I will give on this, and Nate Sellers from Average Jack Archer gave me this tip. A little screw, the way you take these apart is there's a little screw right there. I had a little, a small precision set of, of screwdrivers. I could not get that screw loose. So I emailed Nate and he said that, because he, he's a proponent of these broadheads too, he said he bought this little cobalt multi-precision screwdriver. It's got a bunch of different head size heads in it. And the PH1 head fits this screw perfectly and with no issues. This thing has a nice grip on it. You can take that screw out. I'm not going to do it right now. Pretty easy to get that screw out and back in. So that's a little tip there. If you're going to go with these, I would recommend... If you want to take the blades apart and sharpen them, get a little screwdriver like this. Uh, it's a cobalt. Uh, probably find it on Amazon. Cobalt uh, multi tool. I can put it in the just put a link to it in the description if you want to get one. And last but not least, we've got the much controversial Rage uh, Broadhead Company. Rage SS is the name of this one. It is. It is. It's identified easily by the green ferrule. Uh, it's the only one I've ever seen with a green ferrule, but that's how you notice them. You can still buy these online. I think you could get them on Lancaster Archery. You could get them on Amazon probably. I'll put an Amazon link in the description if I find one that you can buy there. They're going to run you in again $40 probably for a, a three-pack of them. But otherwise, I don't know that they're... I think where you're going to have to buy them are from other like dealers that have them in stock because I think they've kind of quit making this broadhead. Now, when this broadhead came out, it was marketed as to someone like me. It's for the low kinetic energy... Uh, low draw weight shooter, so it's not got a huge cutting surface to it as a, like typical, you know, some of your Rage broadheads with the big two and a half inch cut or two, 2.3 inch cut, two inch cut, whatever it is, big old blades. Um, this one's a smaller one, a uh, smaller cutting surface, so it's, it's made to get that penetration for a lighter weight shooter. That said, this thing, I've killed several deer with this one. I can't even actually tell you how many off the top of my head that I've killed with the with a Rage SS broadhead? Um, at least five or six deer, probably with the with the Rage SS broadhead. The first deer that I shot with one of these was a, was a small doe, um, and I shot her at about eight yards. I was really irritated because whenever I shot her, I barely felt like I barely got any penetration. I was so mad, and she ran off and. I waited a little bit and then I got down, went to where I last saw her. I thought, well, let me, let me see if there's a blood trail and then I'll make the judgment call on these broadheads because they're supposed to penetrate, you know, when I found the, 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 where the blood started, it never stopped. And there was blood, the easiest blood trail I've had to follow probably ever deer hunting with just a single 
you know, entry. There was no exit wound that I can remember. It had to have gotten both lungs because she did not go 60, 70, 80 yards and she was done. So uh, I, after that, I was like, okay, I'm not giving those a fair shake by saying I didn't get penetration. Now, when you shoot a deer at eight yards, if your archer's paradox, if your arrow hasn't flattened out completely yet and got to flying straight, you're not going to get a lot of penetration. Um, so I can't be can't be fair there to say that it didn't get penetration because you know what? Then I shot a doe at 20 yards and it blew right through her. I've shot another doe at about 25 yards. It blew through her. Um, I shot a buck that was, I shot a little forward. He didn't go very far and, uh, got a great blood trail on him to follow in the dark. So, um, you know, this broadhead is a solid mechanical broadhead that I would recommend, not just for the low kinetic energy shooter. If you shoot 70 or 80 pounds, long draw length, it's going to do great for you too. So good mechanical option there. These have the shock collar on them, as you can see there you tuck those blades in behind. I haven't had any of these fail. I've practiced with them. The blades open up like they're supposed to every time. Uh, so, you know, I know people knock on mechanical broadheads a lot. I know they knock on rage broadheads a lot. I think as long as you've got these set up the way they're supposed to be, the shock collar, you know, it holds the blade in behind the little lip or tag on the, on the shock collar. It's not supposed to go between them, between the tags. If you install them right, I haven't had any failure on these and anything I've killed with them or in the times I've practiced with them. So it's a good little broadhead. The, the knock on this one and the reason that I'm even switching from it this year, I switched from these to the Magnus Stingers and then I switched back to these. They're reliable. They fly like your field point because they're mechanical. Well, the knock on these for me is one of the does I killed this year with these she didn't go very far. I didn't have a blood trail. I don't think she had enough time to, from the time she got shot to the time she died, I don't think she had enough time to start bleeding yet out that was pouring out. Uh, the other one that I killed this year, I made a good hit on that deer. It only ended up being a single lung hit. And we found her a long way away and had to use a dog to find her and had it like zero blood. I was really surprised. So it's not fair to say that these don't leave a good blood trail because I've seen blood trails they leave and they're fantastic. But then I've been one that I've shot that didn't have any blood at all. And I was really surprised by that. And so that's the knock on them, I guess. The other knock on these is the blades are, well, the good thing is the blades are super easy to sharpen. It's only one edge you're talking about. So let me see if I can, I'll grab one here that's got the blades. You can see them deployed. When they're fully deployed, they look like that. The blade up here at the top, you can take it out, but because it's curved like it is, there's really no good way to sharpen it, at least not at my skill level. So that's a knock on it. I know that can just act as a chisel tip and it doesn't really have to be sharp, but if you've got a blade on your broadhead that's, a, that's able to be sharp, it should be sharp. And I can't sharpen those, so that's one knock. But as for the blades themselves, they're easy to take out of there. Use an Allen wrench to take out the little screw right here in the middle of the ferrule. Take those out. Sharpen them right up. They sharpen easy and they stay pretty sharp for long enough to kill a deer. And then you can resharpen them and these can last you for a long, long time. Now, one thing I will say about, about broadheads is one of the questions that's always asked, and this is a kind of a different topic. One of the questions that's always asked about broadheads and, and arrow flight is, are they going to shoot like my field points? The reality of the matter is, and what I've learned in recent years is, as long as you have a bow that's tuned, and an arrow that's tuned, any broadhead you put on the front of it really should fly like your field points. Doesn't matter if it's a fixed blade or a mechanical blade or a mechanical broadhead, it should fly like your field points as long as it's tuned. So I will give you an example. I went to my archery shop and I had to have a serving replaced or repaired on my on my cables, on my bowstrings. And all just from taking that down and replacing that serving, it changed my arrow flight enough to where I had to go back in and get it paper tuned again to get the arrow straightened out, to get the rest straightened out so it was shooting straight again. Because I came home and shot my field points. They shot okay, but they were shooting a little low, I think it was, or a little high, one or the other. I thought that was weird. So then I put a broadhead on there. The broadhead was shooting higher. 
than the field point. And I'm like, well, that, that sucks because I had them perfectly tuned before. Took it back to the shop, and sure enough, that arrow, because of just taking the using putting a bow press on it and bringing the strings down and repairing that serving, it had the arrow not flying straight anymore. Got that fixed, they fly straight together again. So, yeah, as long as you have your, your, your arrows and your bow tuned, any broadhead should fly like your field points. Thank you for watching Farming for Whitetails. We'll see you next time.